It's been a huge month for Tesla news announcements that are going to affect the price and range of Teslas in years to come. In this video, I'm going to summarize the top three news items of September, so let's dive straight in. In this video, we'll look at the battery day announcements that happened on the 22nd of September and try to get to the bottom of why the reactions were so polarized. We'll also look at the played trimotor system and see what it means for Tesla cars in the future, and then finally look at software updates that are expected in the coming few months. So battery day was part of Tesla's annual stockholder meeting, and it pretty much outlined their battery plans for the next few years. Now, I think the reaction by the media pretty much showed whether the writers were pro-Tesla or anti-Tesla. The main issue that I could gather was the fact that Tesla didn't actually announce anything and then go, it's available next week and it was a slow implementation over a period of about three years and with Elon Musk rarely meeting deadlines that was the area of concern. So let's go into the detail of the announcements and why I don't think the time frame is as important. So Tesla seemed to be taking the Kaizen approach, I might have pronounced that wrong because I'm not Japanese, but Kai means change and Zen means good and the philosophy behind it is about continuous improvement i.e. making lots of little small changes and then eventually that adds up to a big change. You might do that with your home energy bills, so you might swap your broadband provider, save £5, swap your energy supplier, save £5, and gradually before you know it, you might be saving yourself £100 a month. Tesla spelled out five changes they were making to their battery cell production, and on their own they would have probably been quite insignificant, but added up they made a whopping 54% increase in range and a 56% reduction in cost. To put that into context, my Model 3 that currently does 254 miles on a charge would do 391, and the long range Model 3 that currently does 348 miles on a charge would actually do 535. The price per kilowatt hour in Tesla's battery is estimated to be about $127, so that works out about £100. The Tesla Model 3 battery is estimated to be around 50 kilowatts, so it makes up 5,000 pounds of the cost of the car. So in three years, I could have a Tesla Model 3 that will effectively do 391 miles and cost me 2,800 pounds less, or a Model 3 that does the same range but cost me 4,000 pounds less because it'll have a smaller, cheaper battery. And don't forget, these announcements were for batteries alone. If you add into the efficiencies that Tesla are making with their inverters and their motors and reducing manufacturing costs, you can expect the range to increase further than that and the cost to come down even more. Tesla also announced they're going cobalt free, which will really hinder those electric car haters that always say cobalt's mined by child labor in the Dominican Republic of Congo. Well, next time they do that, just remind them that yes, lithium ion batteries do contain cobalt and use over 50% of the world's cobalt supply, but the majority of that is actually made up from mobile phones and other lithium ion battery devices. Electric cars are estimated to use about 10% of that, so overall world supply, that's about 5%. What you can also tell your combustion buddies is that to get sulfur free petroleum, you need to use a catalyst. That catalyst is actually cobalt, and they use about 5% of the world's supply. So electric cars and petroleum cars currently use the same amount. If we remove cobalt out of our batteries, then that's going to reduce, and maybe we can use that technology to do mobile phones and laptops, so actually suddenly the cobalt supply won't be going into lithium batteries at all, and it will be the oil industry having to question their use of cobalt. Now another change Tesla made was something called tabless architecture. Now I'm not an electrician, so feel free to correct me in the comments, but my understanding is that all the energy goes through a tab at the end of the cell. And because of the thermal implications, there's only so much energy can go through there before it'll overheat and cause problems. My interpretation of it is, is if you had a five amp wire in your house and you try to put 40 amps through it, it would overheat and just not work. And I think this is the same with the current tab design in the Teslas. And that's why when you're charging on a supercharger, the kilowatts per hour varies because the car is trying to maintain thermal equilibrium. And therefore you limit how quick your charging can go. What they're saying with this tablet design is the thermals don't create an issue at all, which means in future we might be able to charge at even faster rates than we do already. At the unveiling of the Cybertruck in November, Elon Musk subtly hinted that the Cybertruck was capable at charging at more than 250 kilowatts. Now, considering the highest rated supercharger, the V3s are only rated to 250 kilowatts, that might imply that a V4 supercharger is a work in progress, and who knows what rate that might charge at. If I could charge my Tesla Model 3 with 250 kilowatts and no limiting, I could go from 20 to 80% in just seven minutes. Or to put it another way, I could add 120 miles in that time period. With a short toilet break taking between 10 and 15 15 minutes, we're talking no issues whatsoever when it comes to charging or delays to your journey. And I think this is where people miss the point about battery day a little bit. This is what Tesla is going to be introducing slowly over the next few years. Some advancements in six months, some 18 months with full completion in three years. Compare that to other manufacturers that are announcing vehicles that are coming out in the next six months. I'm thinking here of the ID4, which actually I really like the look of it and I imagine the build quality is better as well. 
The ID4 looks like it comes with two battery capacities at the minute, a 52 kilowatt hour battery and a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which kind of is on par with the Model Y and the Model 3. The difference is their lower size battery, the 52 kilowatt hour battery, can only charge up to a maximum of 100 kilowatts per hour, which if you look at the Model 3 or Model Y in that range, it would be 200. Take their bigger version, the 77 kilowatt hour battery can only go up to a maximum of 125 kilowatts. The Model Y in three equivalents does 250 kilowatts. So what I'm saying is Tesla already doubles that charging capacity of competitors of vehicles that haven't even got released, and they've just outlined plans how they're going to improve that further over the coming months and years. Although the Model Y isn't out in Europe yet, I expect it won't be long after completion of the Berlin plant which is scheduled for about mid 2021 and it makes sense that if you're building a whole new plant you're going to implement some of these new battery day event changes into your manufacturing process from that I take that we're expecting a Model Y that's cheaper has a better range probably a better build quality because it's built in Europe and significantly less shipping costs that's going to be a tough competitor to beat in the very competitive SUV market I think the two key metrics people look for when buying an electric car are range and cost although looks are important clearly they're not that important so overall I think people reported on battery day being a null event because nothing was here today all of it is planned and promised in the future and with Elon Musk always breaking deadlines I can see the area of concern and why people weren't as excited as we first thought but the key message I wanted to get across was really that they're way ahead of the game already so even if it is a little bit delayed they're probably still going to be ahead of the competition the other announcement that dropped on battery day was the launch of the played trimotor system on the Model S now Elon Musk's focus was purely on speed saying it can do 0 to 60 in less than two seconds it has a top speed of 200 mile an hour and 1,100 horsepower, and is targeted purely at the Porsche Taycan Turbo S. The bit I was interested in, because I'm not a speed freak, was actually the range, because it was estimated to go over 520 miles. So the two things are happening here, they're putting in a massive battery, which is gonna make the range a lot bigger, or the fact that they're using three motors is increasing the range significantly. When Tesla introduced their all-wheel drive versions of the Model S in 2014, people were quite surprised because it actually increased the range. And normally in combustion engines, when you add all-wheel drive, it reduces the MPG. Tesla explained how they achieved this, and basically each motor had a different optimal power output. So one was built purely for acceleration and power, the other was built for high-speed cruising, and combining the two meant you could get much better range efficiency out of your battery. And this might be what's happening in the tri-motor system. If Tesla have engineered each motor to spin at slightly different speeds and have slightly different top efficiencies, they can get the most range out the battery. And who knows, once the hype drops around the played tri-motor system, we might start seeing it creep into the cheaper long-range versions, which will boost range even more. Finally, let's look at the up-and-coming software updates we can expect in the next few months, and I really hope this one isn't a rumour. And that's because Elon Musk recently tweeted that we'll be getting bird's-eye vector view so that we can park and see 360 around our car. Now, I'm not quite sure how they're going to achieve this without an additional camera on the front of the car, but I'm not going to argue because I don't understand how Tesla do a lot of things. He tweeted it will be coming as part of the full self-driving software. Now I'm not sure whether he meant if you own full self-driving you'll get it as a feature or whether he meant when the autopilot rewrite comes out everyone will get it distributed at the same time. It's been a feature I've been really jealous about. I've seen it on Audis, Volvos and I can't wait for it to come to the Model 3. The downside is that full self-driving was meant to come in 2018, meant to come in 2019 and now it's coming by the end of this year but we are running quickly out of months in this year. Now Elon Musk did say on Battery Day that full self-driving was going to be released in beta in about a month's time so maybe we'll see if that timeline's on schedule once we see public betas of full self-driving drop near the end of October. The latest software update 2020.40 is starting to show up in limited capacity and unfortunately it doesn't look like the major autopilot rewrite we were hoping for. Early release notes suggest that you can now put a pin on your glove box so when you steal the iPad off the kids because they're being too rowdy in the back you can put it in the glove box and then they're not going to be able to retrieve it. You'll also get to choose which phone the Tesla Model 3 prioritises if two people get in the car who have historically linked via Bluetooth. Which might be quite handy because sometimes I've got him and my friends have once played a tune through the centre console and it will default to them and I end up receiving phone calls that are meant for them. To sum it all up, in the next few years Teslas are going to go faster, they'll be greener, they'll go further and they'll be cheaper. In the next few months we'll see small incremental software updates with full self-driving promised by the end of the year but at least they don't have to update their website every year because it's been on there for the last two. That's all for now. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit subscribe for my weekly videos on the Tesla Model 3 and also to give it a big thumbs up because that helps the channel if you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.